Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta at the Bharti headquarters in Delhi. And who is my guest today? But India's most prominent African, Sunil Bharti Mittal. Welcome to Walk the Talk. Thank you, sir. Wonderful to have you uh, as, a, as an honorary African just a week after we had President Zuma of South Africa. I'm delighted that we are finally there in the continent of hope. I believe the next decade is going to belong to Africa. What gives you that confidence? Uh, there is trouble even in South Africa. I mean, you look at any international publication, news is all about troubles in South Africa and the confusion and the poverty and the misgovernance. Sometimes it looks like a story in India. Well, if you look at how the world is moving, the US, Europe, and other more advanced uh, economies of the world are shrinking, or if, in a, if not shrinking, they are at best on a standstill mode. India and China are really driving. Where will this move? Uh, next. Africa as a continent is the next continent and that's where the activity has started. People are investing today in the basic raw materials but eventually processing of materials, factories, services, it all build out. Imagine Africa as India was 15-20 years back and I really sense that opportunity. India with natural resources. With natural resources. But they have it and it's going there. It's going there. When did you get focused on Africa. You did get focused on Africa at some point. Was it just MTN or was it some, some, some kind of philosophical, philosophical discovery of Africa? Well, we, I think we very early on realized that uh, if we ever have to go out of India, it's not going to be Europe or the US, it's going to be Africa or the emerging world. So in 1997, I spent my 40th birthday in Botswana bidding for a license, which we lost to uh, some other bidders. And then we got Seychelles in 98. And then, of course, we tried the famous uh, MTN1 and MTN2, which never went through, and now Zen. So was Zen always at the back of your mind, or did it happen later? No, I, I would say Zen uh, came to us in 1995 in the form of Celtel, right. which was acquired by the Kuwaiti company called Zen. Uh, we lost that bid in, 90, uh, in 2005. So it was on our radar screen, but not available. MTN became available. We went for it twice. But to be honest, it was a compromise. No Airtel brand. Hmm. No management control, just board influence, and, uh, but the largest trophy. Here we have the second uh, trophy, but full control, Indian brand, and more importantly, injection of Indian model into Africa. That's the whole point, going in for MTN with so many compromises. They were compromised. Were you also driven by a, a compulsion to acquire something overseas because everybody seemed to be doing it? So just as I used the expression, Izzat ka sawal earlier, shall I use the express, expression, bed chal? Because four or five of top Indian corporates, your peers had done it, or were in the process of doing it. So how can a Punjabi be left behind? <laughs> <laughs> no. Huh? I think the, what was driving us was uh, we had to diversify. Huh? We, we are the leaders in telecom in India. Unfortunately, the regulation has been uh, unfolding in a very, very negative way for the established players in India. Uh, the company is strong today to diversify. It was important for us to add one more large piece outside India. So for our shareholders, there's a diversification of risk in telecommunications. And it's an entrepreneurial risk because you've taken, uh, you've taken debt which you never did. This is true. I mean, uh, what if, kind of debt? Oh, it's a very large debt. Right. We have taken a $9 billion debt, a uh, company which is generally loath to taking any so debt. So conservative, yes. Very conservative. In fact, we had cash on our books when we did this deal, and now we have debt. But the good news is we struck, because of our strength of balance sheet, a debt deal with banks at 2.5% of interest rate, which means for $200 million of interest per year, we have secured Africa. I mean, that's a big, big, uh, I would say, headlines here. While the debt is 9 or $10 billion, the outflow is very small. It's a, it's, it's a very finely cut ticket. Yes. Okay. I mean, in fact, we were fortunate to have but, done but, it. But tell me, how does it feel? Uh, I know that, you know, uh, you are a big tycoon now, but <laughs> deep, deep inside you, you have a middle class mind. Which right? is true. And, and, and a middle-class Indian doesn't sleep well with debt on his head. I would say uh, you are absolutely right. So it took me a long time to get used to uh, leveraging to this extent to do a deal outside. Uh, we will not keep our debt too much for too long. And uh